first to the county. Okay. That's a hundred percent reimbursement. What'd you say it was? Forty three? Forty two sixty one. You um, haven't right. used much of it this year. We just haven't had a lot of at this so far this year we just haven't had a lot of requests for it. We've come real tight on it. Mm -hmm. So yet they're asking they better be checking several other places before they come to us not for help. They tend to use us a lot as a bank for a while. Not that it's a big deal, but I'm inclined to cut that down to a thousand dollars. Which to one thousand or buy a thousand? To one thousand. Which one are you talking about? Uh, Forty-two sixty-one. Those funds are used for clothing, and clothing, medication, uh, bus tickets that students have in the public get in the school. Um, it's used for families that, that are in need. Well, that's pretty lean. We're already at 919, halfway through, and he used 38, we spent 62 last year. What's 3240 used for then? Yeah. This is personal item of clothing. Is this personal a, items? Is I see that. It would be, it would be for shirts. It would be for um, if we're buying. That uniforms? Yes. For people out there that? Yes. Yes. Okay. What was your proposal, Mark? Well, it's probably not a good one since you spent a thousand dollars already. I would say cut that down to two thousand. The only reason is that, I mean, that's entirely discretionary. We have a line item prescription medication. That's for detention prescription. That's for kids? Yes. Well, it's there again. I cut that way down. No, you didn't cut it way down, you cut it down. <laughs> well, so one of the reasons is that we tend to get the parents to bring in as much medication as possible, but at the bottom, at the end of the day, they can tell us, no, he's your responsibility. Well, but uh, 13 was 750. Fourteen was four fifty seven. You spent three twenty five so far this year. What number are you on, Mark? I'm on thirty sixty. Thirty sixty. Now this is something go on a general basis. This is what I looked at the tax history of what you spent. So this would be a line item that I would bring back to the cut. But we could cut it now. Yeah, you can cut it right now. So you cut it down a thousand. Cut it to a thousand. Larry had the original motion. If well, it's really not a motion. I just suggested we cut that okay. uh, emergency services from seven to two, and then Jeremy's saying cut thirty sixty to a thousand. Thirty sixty to a thousand, but I still think that's a little low on forty-two sixty-one. You want to put it up? This is one of those things that fluctuates so much. Uh, year before, we spent sixty three hundred dollars. So far this year, only nine hundred nineteen hundred. It really depends on what the crisis is going on in the community. If it's a large family that's house is burned down and they need clothing, you know, there's a lot of different reasons to make. Like this year so far, we just haven't had a lot of requests, and the requests that we've had, we watched very carefully and only okay if it was absolutely necessary. But if we said three, and then with the understanding that, you know, if there is an emergency or an exception, we always come back to the board. I agree. So we reduce it to 3,000 here? Right. And then the other was, uh, 36 to 1,000? Yep. I think those times are right. mm -hmm. Any other changes? You buy all your office supplies at the end of the year? We buy a lot of them. Either that, yeah, at the end of the year. <coughs> I 
All right, with those two changes, need a motion to accept. Perfect. Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you, sir. Uh, juvenile Mental Health Court. Reduced by what, Dennis? Six, 6,000 total. This is what we've already talked about. Juvenile Mental Health, 10 years ago, uh, there's 44 children that were committed. So far this year, last year was 145 kids. You, you saw about 70 increase in kids that are being considered mentally ill now. This is basically Mike's salary. Absolutely. Absolutely. Once they get up to be 18, then it comes back to the county cost. But at this point, you know, we work hard to keep these kids treated early, so hopefully it reduces the adult stages. So what's a typical day like for Mike? I mean, what? Oh, just tell me like what a day Working might with be. the hospitals, um, working with judges, going to court, working closely with uh, um, attorneys, um, getting those children committed into the hospitals, working with them and the judges once they're returned. Mike works with them to try to follow up and make sure that they're following through on whatever the treatment plan is. So they're not, most of the kids don't have probation officers or DHS workers. So once they return, there's no one there to follow up on them. That's part of what Mike does too. To me, this is an essential program because Mark, you say mental health is just going through the roof. And the kids are growing, which means the adult stage is only going to get worse. Having been in conversations with uh, uh, Cherokee and the hospitals, so forth. Uh, Mike picks these kids up when they're identified and on their way to like Cherokee. He works with the parents so they understand what they're going to get into when they get over there. He keeps in contact with Cherokee and reports back to the parents. When a kid gets released, he almost accepts them as they come back in and works with the parents, gets them to follow through and get to where they need to go and be on meds. I mean, what a concept. Yes. Uh, otherwise, they get dumped back in the community and they go, okay. Yes. Well, they end up in our juvenile detention juvenile center. Detention. That's why the jails are Ultimately. full of mental health. Prisons are full of mental health. We're starting young. And so sooner or later, it's going to cost you more money. More money. Yep. Yes, sir. Would it be the desire of the board on this budget and the next budget to have like a quarterly report or a monthly report, half year report, year report? So, are you servicing 10 people, 100 people? He does an annual report. He does an annual? Yes. On this and a team court? No, that's not what you definitely talk okay. about. Okay. That's the next one. I need a motion on uh, to receive on juvenile mental health. Have it. Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Juvenile team court. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I move to receive it. I'd like to hear first. We, are, we have gone to what's called a team panel instead of the National Team Court. Uh, we have collaborated with, with Juvenile Court Services, Gary Niles, where we are now getting delinquent charges, specifically with Berry County Youth. Uh, Steve meets, they have two court hearings a month. One could be just at the initial stage, going through what the charge is, um, setting up the restitution or whatever the consequences would be. And then after that, once a month, they meet with the child make sure that they're following up on whatever the team court's um, uh, direction is. And then once they complete it, hopefully they try to complete it in four months, then it's dismissed at that time and the charges are removed from them. How big is the caseload? Um, we just started in September, and I think he's had 10 kids referred so far. Uh, that would include um, intakes, set up court hearings, following through on court hearings, working with probation officers. I believe the two court hearings a month has been a great idea because it's not where it's just once and then we don't know what happens to them. Every or twice a month we're meeting with that child and the family if necessary to make sure that they're following up on whatever that the directive does. What else is he doing? And he's also a backup. He's also a backup for mental health. So if Mike is unavailable or Mike is doing other things, then he also steps in and picks up the mental health responsibilities too. Jeremy? Well, I just wanted to see similarly to that when Jackie was asking about uh, Mike, just what his day-to-day -day actually looks like outside of the two court hearings a month and following up on, uh, you know, whatever recommendations. No, I, I was just saying similarly oh. to how, how Jackie was asking with Mike, uh, Steve, 
in particular, uh, just kind of what the day to day looks like. So that's an open ended question. Just, oh, I'm yeah. Sorry. No, it's, uh, <laughs> I thought that was good. No, sorry. What it is is that as he gets referrals from juvenile court, he meets, he has uh, weekly meetings with their social health teams or their staff meetings. Um, they go over the cases. He meets on any kid that he has from one of the probation officers he works with regularly, keeps them updated, um, prepares for them to go to court. He works closely with the schools to make sure that they're following up with whatever school responsibilities are for, working with the family or getting calls from the family if there's problems. He then follows up on that, again, working with juvenile court, and then making sure that all the rules of what's called the informal adjustment or voluntary probation is being followed up. And just as a new board member, what was, since teen court started in September? No, it's been going for a while. Um, the, the, the other individual, because of the union um, layoff, and so Steve was, was placed into that position. And we changed, we kind of tweaked the program to make it specifically a Woodbury County. It used to be run in Dakota County. This is just Woodbury County now in the law enforcement center, so we have the sheriff. And uh, some of the judges come in to review it. Okay, and what was Steve doing before? Steve he was doing First Teeth, which is a character um, strengthening program to the use of golf. And he had 200 clients on his caseload. Uh, but because of funding reductions, that program was, was eliminated. Do you serve just Woodbury County residents, both the team and health? mental health court or do we have other counties having people there are from time to time with mental health another county won't come in but once they get to the hospital then the rep or the they get sent back to the county the county they came i'm having a hard, hard time putting a full-time jo job together with twice a month well but it's not twice a month those, those are two court hearings that's happened but he's also backing up on the mental health so anytime mike is gone he's out uh, for any, if he had an injury or he had hip replacement, so he had to do several months of the mental health backup. Um, besides just the court hearings, then it's everything that goes with the court hearings, meeting with the families regularly, meeting with the schools, meeting with the probation officers. Oops, I'm sorry. That's all part of once the child is put on the informal adjustment. He takes that over, but once referrals made to him from juvenile court services, and then he follows up on that full case load. How often, often is, how often is Mike out besides the, I mean, you said the back Not up. Mike, Steve. Right, but Steve backs up. Oh, oh okay. Because the case is being made. Whatever, yeah, I mean, he's, he takes vacations. Um, you know, if he's sick or, you know, recently he's had to take time off. Uh, his wife had to have surgery. So, anytime, or if he's tied up with other cases, someone comes in, Steve can take over that case or at least get it started. But mostly if Mike is or yeah, if Mike is gone for extended period of time, if we don't have a backup, then no one's there to pick up those cases. Is he busy? Pardon? His position is busy. Yeah, he's getting busy. Like I said, it's kind of new to see because we had to change over. We went to a, to a um, team panel. So the one thing we had to do is start going out to the schools, get volunteers to come in, get them trained, working closely with juvenile court services. Because we are dealing with the court now, we had to deal, we had to make a lot of changes in paperwork. So that took several months to work with them and the judges to get the paperwork so that we're legally uh, within the responsibility. Mark, would you say this is just another attempt at supporting um, non incarceration? I mean, it's well, kids that have been yeah. incarcerated and now are released or they've never made it? But, but the whole idea of this program is. To the court or a less yeah. important now team panel, it prevents kids from going into the formal court system. Instead of juvenile court services filing a formal delinquent charge on them and taking them to court and possibly getting them into a system, which could end up in detention or placement, um, this handles it by peers and is handled it right up front for the purpose of prevention and diversion. You've got to have a lot of. Uh different folks coming together to support oh, this, don't you? You have to have you, good you cooperation. Have schools, you have the, you know, you the judges, we have um, juvenile probation, we have uh, uh, law enforcement. So there is a big collaboration. Yes. What is your contact with the schools, or the, for example, the city schools? It was um, uh, charging. Uh, charging. Okay, she was our big person 
I think she's leaving right now. So what we're dealing with, Steve is dealing with, is going into the schools, working with the counselors, sitting at what's called their social health team meetings. Moved or received? I guess. You, you sent a report like for teen court like they do with mental health court? No. More than like yeah. that? I mean, we can yeah, put something together for them to do it poorly if you wish it poorly or... I, I think that I think that would be helpful in Absolutely. terms not only of the hearings but also the follow-ups with Absolutely. the family and, and so we get a little more visibility. I would talk to see and have him have something for his board on a quarterly basis. Well, we want to be able to speak intelligently to our Absolutely. to the citizens about you know what we're Absolutely. funding and, and <coughs> really to be an advocate. I would like to see a report by next week. Okay. Because I'm not very excited about this. Okay. It, it, there's not enough there in my mind to be putting out. $81,000. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I have, I have some of the same, quite, let me call them questions. Okay, we got a motion. Need a second? <coughs> uh -huh. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. You're good for a week. That's one week more than I have. <laughs> uh, juvenile detention continued. GPS trackers. Yes. Um, this individual has been with us two years. The first year he had 45 offenders. That's he puts on the bracelet for the purpose of monitoring his whereabouts, making sure that he's following through on whatever the structure the juvenile court set up on him. This year so far, we handled 75. So the number of kids that he's addressing under tracking continues to go up. That doesn't include the number of kids. He has 50 kids that he's had on house arrest. The difference between house arrest and GPS is house arrest is you're in the house. You can't go any place. His jobs are to go out in the house, talk with the families, talk with the kids, making sure they follow through. He goes in and checks rooms, bedrooms, to see if there's any contraband. He is with the probation officers. Um, he uh, interprets for the probation officers, interprets for the court, collects you ways. His job is number one, and that's to keep the kids out of detention. The majority of the kids that go on the bracelet are kids that are already in detention. We're getting them off of it. If we don't have this bracelet, we'll just get them to stay in detention because there's not an alternative to that thing. Need a motion? The uh, employee mileage hasn't gone above a thousand in the last couple of years if, unless there's a good reason to which one are you talking about 4130 uh, 4130 mileage I cut to 500 if that's just because many times if, if uh, Luis is traveling outside of the Sioux City the state lets us use our car is it cut to 500 right, which one are we talking about 4130 yeah sorry 4130 yeah we, have, we will be cutting to 500 hours it is fifteen hundred now. Okay. I would reduce it to five hundred dollars. Okay. Get that. And then the cell phone expense is that at one time. That's that just because I'm um, kind of bring that up to what it's been equaling. Um, what I'm looking at now, I believe we've already spent. Any of you have what the current amount is that we spent on that? So zero. No. Okay. Um, I, I could reduce that. You know, if I'm looking at my other ones, it's like six hundred dollars for um, mental health, and so I kind of went with that as a general standard. But we should definitely. What he doesn't have a phone now? Is that he it? He has a phone. Yes. I I don't know if he's not being billed for it or not, but um, unless that's coming out of my funding, that very well could be coming out because I got nine hundred dollars coming out of my cell phone. I don't so that could be coming out of that detention funding. You need to fix that. Okay. As I'm out to talk to Dennis about that. Need a motion with the reduction of one thousand dollars. Okay, Steve. Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Are the golf clubs gone? Oh yeah. All right. Real basic tax, Dennis. Okay, 
Okay, on this, this is tied into secondary roads. What we levy out of the rural basic is this levy for secondary roads. And the recent minimum, he's made up a sheet here. And I think everybody got that sheet, I believe. But he can explain it. That's the sheet that looks like this. And he used, we did allocate 80% of low cost and sales tax funds to a referendum to offset the tax asking in the rural basic the funnels money into secondary road. So to maintain the secondary road minimum levy, we increased low cost sales tax that already got together, went up 100000 to 2 million. That way, keep his local levy here in rural basic the same. Well, we always back it in, and the board has historically done it that way. The local option sales tax was for property tax relief, and this is where you put a great deal of it. We're anticipating larger local option sales tax receipts than we've been having. So when we when I calculate that local effort, I take that off of where our local effort calculates. We have to reach a minimum of 75% of the dollars that are available to us on the levy. So we have to take a look at 16 and 7 eighths of a cent levied against all property, $3 and 3 eighths of a cent levied against all rural property. That's what our 100% property tax ability would be. Multiply that times 75% it shows what the minimum levy would be. I deduct our anticipated local option sales tax and then the balance is property tax. Now this year we're a little bit higher than the minimum, but hopefully that local option sales tax keeps coming on strong this year at <coughs> the end of the, uh, I think we've really benefited from the CF construction in this area because typically we're running about 1.7 million a year. Now we're looking at closer to 2 million a year. Um, that's how we work the, the property tax and receipts in. Also this year for the first time, in several years, ranch is paying about a $200,000 increase in our earnings tax fund dollars. Uh, time 21 is also up by almost $100,000. So that's allowing me to come in at the property tax levy that we had last year for the total dollars. Now on top of that, two years ago, the board started levying $1.3 million a year, and we're putting that into a special bridge fund. Uh, we've already gone out to a series of public meetings and spent a lot of time with our taxpayers explaining it to them. We identified 14 bridges and one road grading and paving project that would be paid for out of this program. Um, we're in the second year of that. We've allocated the full first year of that. Most of those expenses carried over into fiscal year 2015, and we've already amended the budget to reflect that for this year. Um, we're working right now on the uh, Grading for paving project south of Anthem in the office. We're working on the uh, uh, plans for that. And uh, once you get a little time past budgeting, I'd like to kind of show you a couple of concepts for that intersection of the east end. Um, right now, um, one option is looking at over $2 million, where we've got a lot less budgeted for that grading project. But we're, what we're doing with that is we were looking at making those roads a cross intersection rather than a current swing curve. If we just bring D50 up and bring it in the swing curve, we might be able to save as much as half a million dollars on that design. So uh, it's something I want to talk to you guys about and see how you'd like that to look. I can make either work from an engineering perspective. But uh, that's the biggest end of the engineering. If you choose to keep the $1.3 million a year going for the bridge levies, then we have approval from the taxpayers to do that for five years. Um, yes, we do. Um, there was uh, good support for that at the time that the board went out and uh, helped us. You know you're the envy of the engineers. Well, and, and part of that is because you kept the promise of property tax relief for the local option sales tax. Not many counties can raise $2 million for their road departments for local option sales tax and leave such a large portion of your maximum levy untouched. If you look at that $1 million, that is what we would have to levy just to meet our local uh, responsibility so we don't lose road use tax fund dollars. Um, many counties are at 100%. You can't levy that much. We're at what? 
we're well at two dollars and thirty eight cents. Um, we're at sixty four point eight nine percent. No, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong year. I don't have my 2015 year here, but we're we're in the neighborhood right now at 2.3 million dollars, a little over 60 percent. And again, that's where where the, the power of that local option sales tax dollar helps you. We get a little over four million dollars a year, maybe 4.6 million dollars next year. That is revenue tax fund dollars. We got a half a million dollars in rise money coming. And that's going to take care of the last portions of the uh, Port Neal Road improvements and 250 Dove Street improvements. Um, again, it all depends on how those lettings fall. It may be larger next year, smaller this year, uh, depending on the contractors who need to do that work. Um, we're hoping for some Hungry Canyons money. Uh, we have one of our projects uh, it's a replacement of a bridge with a large box culvert. Matthew? Um, I emailed something to your wrong email, so it didn't get on the agenda. My, my mistake uh, this week. And I don't know if it needs to be on next week at a meeting or if it's, or, and I just bring it up because it kind of regards this. But um, my understanding from talking with Dennis is we supply through local option sales tax from the 20% to economic development, 100% of the budget to the general basic fund, uh, economic development. And then 80% to planning and zoning. Um, okay, on that, we, the way we split it, it's 80% for roads. No, 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 no. I, it, <coughs> right. But of, of, but of that 20%, we don't fund 100% of planning and zoning. Of planning and zoning and um, it, it's just in this whole discussion of the local option sales tax, so I don't know if that, is that something that the board needs to, take action on or is that something that we just you want to cover that other 20 percent yeah so 100 percent would come it would cover 100 percent would come sales from local option sales tax who's that for oh, so be, i think it's 21 or 31 thousand yeah. 31 thousand what we're saying the way i budgeted to get the tax asking the one increase the real basic i'll only move to 134 thousand for planning zoning we could potentially fund the whole department and fund another 31000 dollars local option, which would reduce the tax asset. So I think what Matthew's thinking about is, can we have a agenda item approving those two transfers to cover from local option, cover economic development, the general basic fund, and cover the full funding of planning zoning and the rural basic. Right. And I'm sorry to interrupt. I just, I don't know if it's a board action thing or not. That, that should be board action, yes. Usually okay, can you make that happen next week? Funded it is it eighty percent? No, but it's eight. It's varied every year. Yeah, we've been some years been half, some years been full, yeah. some years been partial, but we're suggesting full funding this year. Yeah, I, I would like to get in a regular habit of that because it's not all local option sale. It's not all rural. Uh, but that planning is only is all rural. Well, it has they can't to go to Sioux City, they can't go into cities. Well, he has to deal with the majority of his time in the last year has been uh, with Sergeant Bluff, Salix. Uh, dealing with CF. Yeah. So that's economic growth. Come up by and zoning. Yes. Both of them. Lang zoning was, they did all the work on the master general permit for the CF. They spent a lot of hours on that, trying to get a master permit, so having 10,000 permits get it down to one permit. A lot of planning zoning did take efforts down there, but planning zoning does affect the economic development anywhere because you got your zoning ordinances, you got your zoning classification, residential, commercial, every industrial. It can be related to economic development very easily. So we really can't mess with this budget because it's backed into and we're putting in what we need to put in to meet state and federal funding. To meet state funding because if we come up short of that local effort, we lose dollar for dollar from the road use tax fund the receipts that we get, which is four point. Now, does this cover everything under secondary roads? 
The only one that doesn't cover roadside management. That's separate. Oh, okay. Yeah, roadside management. That's separate. Okay. Everything at the bottom. Okay. Need a motion to receive? Move it. Need a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. All right. Now, roadside management. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. So, just for clarification, that's uh, being put on the agenda for next week as far as uh, PNG 100%. You know, I would. For me, I would prefer to wait till we get through all the budgets, or, you know, and look at that as one of the options to balance it out. I mean, it's not really balancing it. anything; it's just changing where it's well, going. Well, it is sort of. Um, you know, tax asking well, won't affect anything in general basis. That's what you're getting to. Because we already fund one of them at 100 percent. It just seems like it seems kind of odd. We have this money that's allocating in that area. And, Funding eighty percent of another department. It's been debated every year. Really? Mm -hmm. So is that some? I'm just I'm just asking for clarification. Can that be? Are you asking? Yeah, that, yeah. That to be put on the agenda yeah. next week. And is uh, that, yeah, I did. And it was. All right, it should be agenda item. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Roadside. The weed man. I think the biggest request we made in the weed commissioner's budget is to replace his 1989 Ford F-250 pickup. Um, so we've been... Uh, 1990. Pardon me? So you want to buy him in 1990? Yeah, <laughs> we'd like to get him into the new uh, millennia here that we can. Um, we propose to buy a half-ton pickup, regular cab. Um, wouldn't necessarily need to be pulled over either. Because the primary thing that he's using it for is number one to get out where his mower is, or at, at, you know, on the periods where he is out with the brush mower working for us. Um, he's also calling back parts, supplies. Um, Danny, do you want to do this? Would it be prudent to take this out of the CIP? The car, that's potential, it could be. Yeah. Yes, it could be. No, I'm not okay. CIP, could replace it. How's that funded? Equipment replacement is funded with gaming dollars. CIP is loans. CIP is for something that lasts five years or longer. It's an improvement of some type to a service, equipment, building, whatever. This really should be um, an equipment replacement using gaming revenues. Because it may only last three years, it may last four years. Those sheriff's cars, so they go every three years. So you can't really put that CIP, you could put an equipment replacement though. I talked about it after. Okay. It'll probably come very close to 10 years to this track. Yeah, there's a place to go at 20 on the other one. So. Um, but uh, it, it is in, in replacement, and we like it something a little more fuel efficient. Basically, he's running errands with it and running to and from where his slow moving equipment is operated. So six miles per gallon doesn't go to a tighter battle for it. What would we see with? Motor vehicle expense up to debate. What's that tonight? Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those say nay. Thank you. I just keep us posted on what you do with the equipment. So. All right. I think we're done. Thank you. Do we need adjournment?